So I'm going to play around with CSS variables, and if you're not familiar with those, we have the ability in CSS to create custom properties as long as we start it with a double dash. So we invent whatever we want, and then we can set whatever value we want. And so this allows us to invent new properties for CSS. So today I'm going to try to invent an aspect ratio property. To do this, I'm going to need this value to be updated constantly. And so we're going to use JavaScript to set the value of our CSS variable. And to do that, I'm going to use this computed variables plugin. So what this allows us to do, we pick a name for our CSS variable, we give it a JavaScript function, we tell it something to watch, and then the events that it should reprocess on. And every time one of these events happens on one of the things that we're watching, the function is going to set the value of the CSS variable. So I think that that gives us all the flexibility that we need. Let's go ahead and build a demo. So I'm going to do a div here. This is going to be our box. I'm going to go ahead and give it some styles so we can see it. Save it to our desktop, and I'm going to load this up. So now you can see we've got a box, it has a background, it does not have an aspect ratio. And so we have some work to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and add JavaScript. Now I'm going to use this all client side. So I'm going to use an ES module, but you could do the same thing uh, bundled or just with a regular script. So now I think we're ready to make this work. So in order for us to get the aspect ratio, we need to know the width of this element. And we have an aspect ratio to divide it by. So like the formula is the actual width divided by the desired width divided by the desired height. So this here represents the actual ratio for the aspect ratio. And then that is what we're calculating against. Now, if you had a known height and you needed to calculate the width, you could kind of rearrange this formula. But with web development, we're almost always working with the width rather than the height. So that's how we're going to write our function. So we're going to look for a custom property named aspect ratio. And the cool thing here is that we could put it in our CSS, but then it won't have any knowledge of the tag. But if we put it in HTML, then when we find it in HTML, we'll already know which tag it belongs to because we can have more than one element on here with more than one um, that are using different values for the same property powered by the same rule. We'll see that in a second. So I'll go ahead and say this one's going to be pink. So now we have two boxes. So the JavaScript function that we need here is going to be, it's going to take the value that we give here, which we haven't written yet. It has knowledge of the event, and then it has knowledge of either the tag it's found on or the rule it's found in. So here it's going to be a tag. And what we need is the tag's offset width, which is how wide it shows up rendered in the browser. And we're going to divide that by and now in here, we need width divided by height somehow. So we're going to use the value that we supply in our HTML uh, somehow to get the width and the height. So we could do this if we did 16 divided by 9. That's a common aspect ratio. 1.7777. We could do that, and we could put 1.777 in here. Um, so yeah, let's just say by value and see what happens. Uh, we need to set the height to our aspect ratio and probably add a PX unit. 
So now we have, based on whatever the current offset width is, you can tell that this number is going to be reprocessed. So here, let's watch this as I resize. So here is the calculated aspect ratio. And you can see that as I resize this, it's recalculating what that value is. We could make it slightly more pure here by keeping it just a number, and that's not going to do anything, or it shouldn't if we have a doc type. So what we would need to do here then is multiply that by 1px to turn this pure number into a px unit. So this will also work if we don't want to put the px directly on the thing that we're resizing. So I think that's it for an aspect ratio property. How can we make this a little prettier? I don't like this 1.777. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put width 16, height 9, and see if this allows us to use it. I think this is a nicer expression, because you usually have a known width and a known height. But looking at that 1.77, to me, doesn't immediately say 16 by 9. Uh, let's make this one the opposite, just for fun, so you can see that this is actually working. So that one's going to be very, very tall, and this one's going to be very, very wide. So here, uh, if this is the value now, we can do value width divided by value height, because there's a width and a height property that each have a value now. So there is our wide one, and here's our tall one. I'll flip those around so you can see that it's actually pulling in these numbers. And doing it responsively. So that's a fun demo. Let's see if we can invent some element-based units. So here, if we check the CSS spec, we're also going to use computed variables for this. If we look in here, there's these excellent viewport percentage lengths. So we have VW, which is 1% of the browser viewport's width, VH, which is 1% of the browser viewport's height, VI and VB have to do with reading directions, so that could be different depending on whether it's a right to left or left to right. Um, the direction that it's going, and vmin and vmax. So vmin is going to be the shorter of either 1vw or 1vh, and vmax is going to be the greater, whichever one is bigger. So what I want instead is like, I want eh and uh, you know ew based on an element's width, not necessarily the viewport. Now this could lead to some kind of like a feedback loop with the numbers. Uh, if we're sizing an element based on its own size, you could see how that could get away from us. But there are situations where we should be able to use it safely, and knowing how CSS properties and CSS variables inherit, we might be able to use these on children of an element. Uh, so let's experiment with that and see if there's anything useful for us. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to copy this. So I don't have to retype most of that. So we have a brand new document. I'm going to go ahead and create a few boxes for us. I'm going to call this element based units. And I'm going to add some text because I think that's what I'm going to size. So I'm going to go ahead and create a style that's going to use one of these. So let's say font size is going to be uh, five EW units. So we're going to save this as EW, and then we're going to multiply that by five. 
So what do we need to do with JavaScript to inform CSS, you know, the value here of 1% of this element's rendered width in the browser? So I'm going to pull this up in the browser. There's our beautiful demo. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, if we were to put it in here, there's going to be no way that we can get a value for this tag that was different than the value for this tag, because these don't necessarily have to be the same size. So defining our custom property here in CSS is not going to serve us today. We will need to define it here so that we can set it individually for this one separate from that. So I'm going to say EW, I'm just going to quote uh, EW as well. So we're going to use that kind of as our own switch. Why don't I do e-w? And then we'll say ew is the value that we're passing in. For this one, I'm going to say eh emin and max. So now we can find all of these by searching for CSS variables that start with E. And it's going to grab all of those and try to process them with this function. So it will give us the value that it finds, the event, which we don't really need for this, and the tag. So what is it that we need in order to find 1% of this element's rendered width? We might not need brackets. We might be able to do this as a one-liner, but let's just think here for a second. So we have the tag. I'm going to go ahead and say that value that we pass in, so the EW, EH, for us is going to select... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. We'll add them if we need them. In here, we're going to have EW, EH, EMIN, and emax. And so this is each of these is going to be a function that's going to return something about tag. So we're passing in. Do we even need to pass in the value? No. Uh, let's just say tag tag offset width divided by a hundred plus the letters px. So we'll see if that gives us what we need. So emin is going to be the minimum between the EW and the EH. I'm going to add plus PX. And then let's see if this is the max. So we'll see if there's any errors or see if there's anything being set. So EW is not being touched. We need to run the function. With the tag. So it got the first two. It's not liking the second one. The second one's here. Because I put the functions inside. Too much copy paste, not enough coffee. So what do we have now? We have 10 and a very small, and then the very small because it's the min and the max. So this should be working if we continue 
by updating this with the actual name. We changed it, we added a dash. So now you can see that this is kind of like 10VW, but it is based on the element's own width. So I'm going to add uh, EH is going to use 10EH, and that should continue shrinking, I believe. Min is going to do the same thing as EH, and this is going to do the same thing. Yeah, so you can see EW and Emax are the same, and the other ones shrank away. You can see them, but if we click, they disappear. If we made them 100, uh, I wonder if that would be okay. So that keeps them at their, oh, keeps them a little larger. So there is some circularity that can happen as you're reprocessing this stuff. Um, let's try to use this for responsive typography instead. So we've got a div with an H1 that says responsive headline. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to supply an EW property on the div that we can use to size the headline. So I'm going to copy this at a few different widths. We'll just do that here in our HTML for fun, because this is a demo. So I'm going to say max width 50px, no, 50%. Let's do this one at 33 and 25. So we've got four different width div with a h1 headline inside. To the div, I'm going to add a border so we can see it. And now for div h1, I'm going to say font size. Let's do the same calculation here, 10 EW. So now you can see uh, these div elements have an outline. So this one is full width, half width, 33%. 25%, and as we, <laughs> I'm going to remove these earlier demos, as we resize this, you can see that they're actually staying scaled to their container. So if we had like a modal window or something where there was a responsive headline, and when it was narrow, it made sense to make the size based on the viewport, but then it hits a certain max width, and the size no longer has anything to do with the viewport width, using something more like an EW unit would make a lot more sense in CSS. So that allows us to do responsive typography and a lot of other responsive things where you only have to worry about the border of the element or a parent element in this case. So it, this unit could be used for anything inside of that tag. So that is how you could do an element-based unit. Anything else that JavaScript can measure, I'm just going to have a peek at MDN here. I look up stuff like this all the time. So if you think about the properties that elements have, width is one, scroll width is another one, um, the number of children it has, there's all kinds of things that JavaScript can either count or measure or know about which you can use with some very simple uh, JavaScript functions. And you just supply that value from JavaScript right to CSS as the value of a CSS variable. And then you're able to use that JavaScript powered value right in your CSS styles. Uh, we didn't need any kind of a preprocessor. We didn't need any anything at all. The CSS is really, really simple. But what we're doing here is actually reaching beyond what CSS alone can do. Now we're styling with JavaScript and CSS together. And the JavaScript rewrote was pretty simple as well. Even for this one, this is four different units in one. So like that's all it takes to make the EW work. If we just have our EW demo, like that's all the code that we need just for EW. So the same thing works. We only used EW there. So you only need that much total to do that. Uh, and if we were just doing EW alone, uh, 
get rid of some of these. We don't need that rule at all, I guess. It would just be tag offset width divided by 100. So that's pretty simple for inventing a new unit and adding it to CSS that it doesn't know about. I think that wraps up the stream. I thought it was going to take a little bit longer than that to invent an aspect ratio property and our own unit, but I think we're done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, check out computed variables if you want to get into this dynamic value being supplied from JavaScript to CSS thing. And you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I see that we're getting a line height unit in CSS and a relative, a root line height based on that. That's something that I've already mocked up using this computed variables plugin. So anytime there's a new unit coming or something like that. Would it be RLH demo? RLH unit demo? Anytime there's anything new coming like that, that's something that you can mock up and experiment and play around with using JavaScript right away. You don't have to wait for the actual CSS support to arrive before you can start using a concept like that. Faking LH units in CSS. So here I grab the computed line height, and if it's normal, we make our own calculation and supply that as the LH variable. And so now LH divided by 2 is half of a line height unit. Uh, this box shadow uses one line height unit and half a line height unit here. Uh, so if we were to change the size of this, You can see it's based on the line height. <laughs> so in the future, when we have an LH unit that we can just put, um, you know, padding 0.5 LH, this demo is what that's going to look like. And this is how we can use CSS custom properties. These are a gift to us. Uh, for updating and inventing our own properties, inventing our own units, anything that is either a property or a value in CSS, we can use with CSS custom properties. So I hope you had fun, and I'll catch you on the next stream.